but let's jump into the future a bit and let's suppose that all these amazing new applications are running on the graphene blockchain steemit is the, the new facebook uh states all over the world know that it's a powerful instrument for influencing e elections and all sorts of world events do the witnesses become targets and is that something that you need to be probably oh, oh, dirty <laughs> Welcome to the Steam Smart Podcast, the podcast that's all about Steam, the blockchain-based social media platform that's taking over the world. I'm here today with Stephen Polsky at Sneaky Squirrel. Hey guys, you're going to listen to me without coffee this morning. Gabriel Shear at Pied Piper. He's hiding from the rain this morning. And I'm George Donnelly at George Donnelly. And our guests today are Travis Boyd, Dow Wisp, an independent ISP owner operator and Fort Galt participant. And Michael at Fairsim, currently the number three Steam witness. Welcome, Michael and Travis. How are you guys good doing? Day. Or whatever it is for you. Doing good. Excellent, excellent. Nice. All right. So our topic today is what are Steve what are witnesses? And what have they done for me lately? So, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about what witnesses are? Um, starting from the beginning, technically. I've, I have to say I never heard your show, so I don't know how far you went into Steam. I uh, with... well, we, we've talked about uh, the basics of Steam. Uh, we've talked about uh, where the money comes from. Okay, but it didn't get into the technical blockchain details. Not yet. No. Okay, so um, Steam is um, based on Graphene, which is powering BitShares also, and it's a delegated proof of stock, uh, proof of stake blockchain, um, which works uh, different to other other consensus finding algorithms like Bitcoin with proof of proof of work or many other coins with proof of stake, um, that not every stakeholder or participant takes part in the block producing process, but only a, yeah, I can say a selected few, which are voted by the stakeholders. So the witnesses are basically the ones securing the blockchain, um, managing your transactions and, and making the consensus between, between the different nodes. You can run your own node, of course, but you will always get your data from the witness. You won't have any Put, uh, any part in the consensus finding. I see. So basically, you guys. So I've seen somebody compare you guys to like the the bank. Uh, the uh, what is it? The the governors of the Federal Reserve System. You know, it's because we're yeah, we want to we want to reach. You know, we want to we want to get the technical stuff, but we definitely also want you know non technical people to be able to grasp it. That so, means that we uh, as witnesses. Um, secure the blockchain, that also means that we collectively decide on the version of Steam which is running. Mm -hmm. So right now we're all having a consensus on which version we want to run and where Steam will go. If the developers, Dan and Ned or somebody else comes up with another idea, creates a fork and says, here, let's go this way, like we change any setting which, which requires that hard fork because some settings can already be set by us witnesses, but s the basics of the chain, like how SPD are created or whatever, um, serious changes need a hard fork and we as witnesses can decide about that hard fork if we want to run it or if we want to keep everything as it was before. So to, to go with the, yeah, another metaphor then that occurs to me that perhaps more uh, people can identify with is kind of like uh, the developers are kind of like the mayor you guys, the witnesses, are kind of like um, the city council. You know? The mayor yeah. wants to change something, and um, you know, you guys, the city council, you can either say yes or no. Is, yes. that, is that correct? Yes, that fits pretty good. All right. we, can, we can bring in our own ideas with the developers, like we could, uh, like the city council could talk with the mayor, like, don't we want to do that? Major mayor can decide if he wants to do it, and um, the city council says yes or no in the end. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you you have to run 
servers that do the, um, the, the, the transaction processing, correct? Right. All the calculations which have to take, uh, take place when, when a post is paid out or something, uh, that's calculated by the witness notes. So, uh, do you run a big server farm? Not yet, no. Um, at the moment, um, uh, pretty much standard server with four cores and I'm running 32 gigabytes, but that wouldn't be needed right now with eight gigabytes, you can run it pretty well. But as we're half a year old only, you see it scales pretty fast and we have to be prepared to yeah, in the end get our own server farm if everything keeps going on like this. Yeah, uh, what were to happen if you'd actually have a, a disagreement of witnesses saying uh, somebody offers an idea and just, I, I mean, I know the way computers work, somebody just needs to run their own server and set it up pointing to a different address and that server will work. Um, so it has to be a unanimous decision for the witnesses for the um, for the uh, fork to occur? A majority decision. Um, there are 21 slots each round and the blocks are produced in rounds with 21 slots. Um, 19 of these slots are filled by the 19 top voted witnesses. One slot is filled by one of the witnesses below and one slot is filled by a minor. If 19 of those Oh shit! I may be wrong there. Nineteen or seventeen of those agree to to the new version. It will be changed, and the others will stop working or be on their own separate chain. Then. Okay. Okay. Um, I have another I think question. It was seventeen of the top and and uh, fifteen? No, fifteen of the top and seventeen altogether. Okay. Uh, but it's been a while since we had this issue the last time, so it's not <laughs> present in my memory. Okay. Uh, yeah. That, so, I mean, this is uh, very much also like the politics of steam it. Um, I mean, we're at this point, it's a, it's a really nice reward. It's a really, really good incentive to produce high quality work and the voting system keeps that in place. Um, I mean, there's obvious benefits, though, where uh, bribery and stuff can come in in the way future. Um, and with that much, with that much at stake, uh, it's only a matter of time before more and more and more qualified people are trying to get into that same spot. Uh, so, I mean, we're going to look at, uh, I mean, are we going to see camp? Do you think we're going to see campaigns and stuff like that of qualified people or? Uh, I really hope so. Um, okay. At the moment, it's all a bit, a bit stuck. We have, we have the, the witness list is pretty much fixed. And um, there are in the lower regions, there are some changes once in a while. But, but if someone new is coming, is having a hard time to get to the top. So to, to get into the top list right now, you will have to run a campaign and really offer something to the community. Okay. So, Michael, how did you get interested in Steam in the first place? Um, I was approached by my uh, friend Fuzzy, who I brought into BitShares a while ago. We met there and um, he came back to me and said, here, Dan has a new project. I want to mine that and can you mine it for me? Uh, because uh, he didn't, didn't get with the command line at that point. Um, I agreed to mine it for him, took a share for me, and then there was a friend of him who wanted to have some mine too, and then I started some miners for myself, and so I was in. Um, read the white paper very early, liked the idea very much, and decided to bring in my, my skills. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So mining, I think some people have questions about mining. I've looked at a few how-tos and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Unix sysadmin, so I'm getting ready to set it up. It doesn't seem very complex. Would you agree to set up a miner? There are good tutorials right now. Um, in the beginning, it was a bit hard because there wasn't a good tutorial. You had to re read through the whole Bitcoin talk thread and get the infos and the details. And have some, some good technical understanding and maybe experience with BitShares before to understand everything. Um, but, but that cleared up pretty, pretty fast. I think middle of April or so, I wrote my first tutorial for an automated setup to, to mine. 
And from then on, it, it's straightforward. You have to install a couple of packages, compile it with CMake, and start the miner. That's it. Excellent. And who, who are the other witnesses, and how, how did they get involved? You know, what do you know about them? Are different. Um, I know most of them because because I'm interested to who's, who's working with me. Um, there are several which started by mining, and most have been involved with mining before too. Um, and a lot of witnesses come from the former bitches or still bitches community, but I don't know how how they are still involved with bitches. So. Um, yeah, that's mostly it. We've been we've been that group of bitches enthusiasts and and newcomers from the beginning and and held pretty close. Have some have some nice guys who joined in later with with different backgrounds like uh, marketing or design. That's mm -hmm. uh, Silver Steam, for example. Or yeah, different skills are coming, and we have a lot of new developers who started a witness but didn't manage to get to the top yet. Mm hmm Excellent. No, I just think it's really cool that like with with Bitcoin, you basically had the option to either buy Bitcoin or mine it, which involved buying a large ASIC miner, especially towards the last few years there, the run up to 2013. And now that's really your only option to mine. So either way, it involves spending a whole lot of money to get the Bitcoin, whereas here we have the option to not participate in that, not spend anything, and just participate in the content creation, curation process. But for the hardcore nerds who are really into the computer stuff and want to participate in mining, like I know Travis here is, I would really love to hear any questions he has in regards to how to get involved, how, how to put, potentially become a witness, how to set up your own mining operation, and what <clears throat> kind of barriers there are. Well, it's, um, it's, it's sort of an ongoing project here. I, I, was, I was getting into mining just a little bit, and, um, and then there was, there was an interesting occurrence where um, someone under the name supercomputing uh, dominated the entire mining queue for several days. Um, I believe they found a shortcut around part of the proof of work algorithm, uh, as I recall. There's, there's a really good write-up. Um, mm -hmm. if, if, if you search on Steemit for uh, supercomputing, you'll find a, a pretty good going through of it. Um, I think Hard Fork 13 patched that. Um, but, uh, uh, that, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, Travis, tell us about your plans. You you want to set up a witness, right? You want to become a witness. Yeah, I I've been I've been working through the uh, the tutorials. I I got I got a little sidetracked actually. There's um, two other guys, uh, current witnesses, uh, uh, Jesta and uh, Zerok, uh, that were working on setting up a. Um, uh, Oh, it's a, a web uh, API uh, cluster to, to back um, um, people that are doing things with the API, trying to do other other projects um, based on the Steam platform. And so I've been putting a node together to um, uh, uh, add to their cluster. So that's that's been that's been interesting. Um, I would like to get into witnessing though, but it's. It's it's starting to seem as as Steam's scaling so fast that the witness the witness um, uh, act might might turn out to actually be more uh, suited to a, a group of people or a small company at the at the way things are growing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I yes, we have to see where it where it ends definitely. But but yeah. you are in in a project which which can act as kind of that, aren't you? I think Fort Gold would have the capacities to run that. Yeah, yeah I'm sure if, if, if we had someone knowledgeable like Travis or even George to help out with overseeing the project, I'm sure there would be plenty of people available to help with that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in getting involved in a, in a project like that because um, you know, I, I think Steam has real long-term uh, potential. I'm really excited about it. And 
I think being a witness is a great way to contribute to that. Here's the thing, though. Like, if I was going to go for being a witness, you know, as part of a group or, or however, like, I'm racking my brain. How do I add value, you know, other than just running some servers, which is, which is pretty simple. I've done it in the past. I've run large clusters, uh, FreeBSD, Linux, um, automated a lot of it uh, for customers and stuff. But, like, how do I add value, by, you know, beyond that? I mean, that, that's the creative challenge, right? Right. Hmm. So um, most wit witnesses are running projects, uh, one kind or another. They either have a website with a dedicated project, or um, like Smooth, he has his uh, curation crew, people he pays for good curation. And so different ideas come together. I'm working on Pivo, which will hopefully bring uh, the Steam blockchain to, to other uses in the scientific community. Mm -hmm. um, well, lots of projects are going on with the witnesses. And, and if you have an ambitious project, I think you have good chances to, to get up to the top because the payment right now, it is very high. We never know where it ends, when it scales, and maybe we'll have to run it for a while in the red. And I think you should be should be willing to do that too but of course you can't force anyone but um yeah, it's a risk and uh with a with a good reward but that reward should again be used to serve the community in some way mm. because that's what people vote on they don't vote on your nice name or maybe they vote because they know you but uh that yeah. only lasts for so long right <laughs> What what's, also what's with everything in Steam, um, the witnesses are, of course, dominated by whales at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's only a few people you need to win in the end to get to the top. Um, I hope that will change soon, that we will have a more, more broad approach of choosing witnesses so that that it's not the founders and a few early miners who say who will who has the best projects in the end going on to serve the blockchain i think over yeah. enough time um people would start wanting to volunteer their services people who feel qualified and also inspired to uh, give or serve the Steemit community. I think, uh, uh, like I brought up earlier, I th as Steemit catches on, more and more people will probably try to get into those positions. And, you know, it's probably going to just be some a nice relief to a lot of the starting developers that are just like, oh my gosh, I, I, I built it to this point. Now somebody wants to take it and I can have a break. I can actually go enjoy some of that money and time that I've been working so hard to collect. Or the beauty of open source, huh? <laughs> yeah, right? No, it's it's uh it's the exemplary uh economic system or it's the exemplary system that uh so many before it had failed. You know, there's there's something that's Somewhere along the way, stopped it. Usually, human greed, but this this system's just it's so philosophically solid, rock solid that um, I I really do think there's a huge uh, future for it. But I'm really curious to see how the um, how the witnesses are going to change up. Is it going to change to that like? Uh, more political sided or is it going to be like a, like you guys said a company or is it going to be like maybe a company running each witness you know if, i don't know how that would work i'm just it could out. it could i think easily turn into a popularity contest where a certain popular account that i think gabriel and i know but we won't mention could <laughs> You know, he's, that guy's gained a lot of popularity in a short amount of time. You know, if he got smart, if he wanted to go after this, he could have the votes, you know. And then, you know, that's, that would feel like a corruption, you know, because as you guys were saying earlier, uh, Steam is about, about quality. You know, that, that's a community aspect. That Part of that is in the, the code, but part of it is in the community and the human element. And I like that. And I like the idea that you have to invest a little bit into the community 
before you start seeing the rewards, you know. Uh, so I, that, I that right concerns now, me. Right now, there's still enough um, whales that would not support that move. The yes. one that you're... The technical side is, is secured for a long while because of those ways. That's a good thing too, because popularity, especially in the beginning. So I think it's a, it's a controversy, but, but a, a nice way to set the whole Steam thing up, to start it with, a, with an in-group, which has certain values and coming from a technical perspective to, to create this platform and let it grow slowly. And over the years, the community can decide its own way and, and hopefully uh, use some of the technical values from the beginning for themselves. Take on a life of its own outside of what the developers originally wanted, but probably would be pleasantly surprised to see it take. <laughs> so, um, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? I'm from Germany. Um, yeah, been living here all my life. I've never really gotten out of here for some holidays, but nothing special. But I've traveled a lot around Germany. I've looked at the different places and found a ni nice place to live now since a couple of years. Um, I'm a software developer. Uh, studied a bit, but but didn't didn't finish started working then and yeah now I quit my job and going to going to concentrate on people awesome awesome it sounds like you know in our last show we had on Nate Brun who's developing scream and he's at the point where he's uh debating you know kind of how much to go to college you oh. know <laughs> and uh so you know Right. Nate, here, here's, uh, here's uh, an example for you of how, you know, you really don't need to, as you, you know, as, as he said, yeah. <laughs> Not that we're trying to influence you, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> but really, college is overrated. <laughs> yes, it is. So um, just to sort of think about the STEAM um, voting, right now it seems that um, the witnesses um, or the, the, the top the top witnesses are really um, being valued by the whales for contributing um, to the to this to the steam uh, platform with uh, software projects and that sort of thing uh, mm -hmm. contributing value in that way seems most of them are involved in some sort of um, um, yeah, developing infrastructure yeah. most of them some are uh, working on the steam code base itself um, software reviews, which are of code, okay. of code produced by the Steemit guys, are reviewed by mostly two uh, witnesses. Some others are having looks too, but two of them are really going deep into the code and looking for issues before new releases. Mm. Mm. That's wise. What do you see as the future of steam what do you see happening over the the short term the next few months the next year perhaps the next 10 or 20 years my short-term predictions are always wrong <laughs> i want to do that <laughs> Very wise. in the long term we are, are we will see a lot of growth we will see the project flourish get into um, new communities and just nature get new uh, functions and new ways to interact with the platform and different users and yeah i, I have a very long-term perspective on steam and hope that it will stay around for a long time and help people to to do what it has been able in the in the last half year it's been amazing to see all this this happy people and and what it has, what it has brought for for so many lives it's it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of that and I hope it will go on like that. Well said. I think, we, I think we can all agree on that. Indeed. As a witness, how tied to your desk are you? Like you have to be right there to monitor things pretty closely or can you slip away potentially to a nice vacation in South America perhaps? I got my mobile <laughs> set up to, yeah, to manage most of the things. And uh, if I can reach some laptop or something, I can do everything. 
It is, it is uh, asking at the moment, especially from the community in the chat. I get lots of, lots of, lots of messages. And sorry if I ignored your messages, but um, I just can't handle all of them anymore. So I'm trying. <laughs> is there, uh, so uh, there, is there a plan to add uh, significantly more witnesses as this thing grows? No. No, okay. Not gonna be able to happen. It has it has been uh, brought up the idea. Um, I agree that the number nineteen sounds sounds yeah just just picked out of thin air. It, it sounds um, fairly arbitrary, yeah. And in my opinion, it wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have any reasons to change it. But it's a huge change in the code base, and mm. that has to be decided on the developers. <laughs> Okay, so that would be quite the decision um, if you were to add more. It wouldn't just be just a simple change in the code. Yeah. Okay. I've got a, I've got a, a question. As, um, as, as the network scales and, and um, it's either used for other things or a lot of, potentially a lot, a lot of people start to come on board, especially the growth curve that we've been seeing, um, will the Will the witnesses need to scale their 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 resources, their hardware, their? Um, uh, you mentioned right now it takes about uh, eight gigabytes worth of uh, a system for, memory for a for a full node, which is oh, serving serving the API, so you can run a client on it. If you mm -hmm. if you run a low memory node, which is an option for witnesses, then you need a bit less. But yeah. Most of the stuff happens in RAM. Most is kept in RAM, so it can be that fast. And um, in the end, when the, while the blockchain is growing, RAM will have to scale up accordingly. Okay. And then so um, I'm going to get kind of weird on you here. Uh, my friend Jake <laughs> and I are like focused on writing uh, science fiction thriller scripts and stuff right now. So let's jump into the future a bit, and let's suppose that all these amazing new applications are running on the Graphene blockchain. Steemit is the, the new Facebook. Uh, states all over the world know that it's a powerful instrument for influencing e elections and all sorts of world events. Do the witnesses become targets? And is that something that you need to... Probably. Oh, dirty. Well, someone actually talked about that, the potential for that recently. Uh, I think it was one of the minor... Uh, witnesses um, that that's pretty so uptime is pretty important for a witness so a, a DDoS attack or, or something like that against their IP space um, that they're running their service from could interrupt them and, and cause them problems or cause them to drop in the yeah um, right redundancy is an issue will have to be an issue for those who aren't running the, uh, redundant machines um, I'm running two servers at the moment and planning to set up a third one soon. So, um, yeah, have to be prepared to you. Everyone uh, highly involved in a cryptocurrency is a target at some place. And you have to know your security, you have to know what you're doing, of course. So how do you handle the, the multiple machine setup? Do you have some kind of failover or are the three machines uh, kind of working together uh, on something? No, at the moment, it's just I get a notice when one goes down, I would go to the other, but it hasn't happened yet. I see. I, I'm planning to set up followers, but it's plans right now. Hmm. So then geographically dispersing them would be yes. So having one in South America, for example. Yeah, would be good for that one. Uh, it's not, not really great internet connectivity down there yet. Though. Yeah, it depends on network latency to the USA, hope, mostly, because yeah. where most of the communication happens. Maybe Brazil. Brazil has fairly decent, they have cables that run straight up to the to north. But yeah, Chile, I don't know about yet. Actually, it's fantastic here as long as you're in town. The house I'm in right now is out side of town and I don't have the fiber optic line going straight in but mm -hmm. in the apartment that I was in last year it was fantastic yeah but I mean like the long haul capability you know like you don't see many data centers in Chile you know there's a, there's, there's, many, no. there's a reason for it you know there's a few in Santiago um, because that's where the, the cable that wraps around the bottom of South America comes ashore and then goes across the mountains mm -hmm. but 
Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why most servers are located in places like, you know, the big data centers are like in North America, Singapore, a little bit in Japan, I think, and Europe, of course. Those are going to be the best spots. Hey, so a question about uh, one of the jobs of witnesses is is to set the uh, annual percentage rate of interest on Steam dollars. Mm Mm-hmm. So how do you guys do that? Do you, do you talk about it or does it happen in software or what? We started with 10% and we're still at 10%. So um, it's not really a change. A couple of people um, lowered it when, when it was too high, when it was at $1.30. Mm-hmm. But as it's using the median, the change of only a few people doesn't change anything in the interest rate. So it has been 10% flat straight all the time. Mm. Yes, we talk with each other all the time. We have two, three dedicated channels for the witnesses where mm-hmm. communication is spread over. And if something is necessary and somebody mentions it, others talk about it. And eventually mm-hmm. we will come to a decision if it's, if, if, if it's deemed necessary enough. So for, um, you know, to control the, uh, the world, you know, the Illuminati and all that stuff, there's Bilderberg. Yeah. Right, guys? So maybe right, in the future right. we'll have Witness Burke. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we have our close. Maybe they already number. have it. Yeah, yeah. Not, this is all just an elaborate scheme. They want a natural growth. Yeah. Luke Rudkowski is going to be there protesting you guys any minute now. Oh, dear. Mm. <laughs> <Like a wall. laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right, more questions, more questions. Let me see. Okay, here's a really popular one that it's not necessarily to do with witnessing, but I'd love to get it on the record in this show at some point. I get asked a lot how the steam dollar is pegged roughly to the US dollar, how that actually works. Um, by the blockchain, um, there are steam, oh, sorry, the dog's crazy. <laughs> Let him talk. Give the dog a voice. Put him on. The puppies. No, no censorship. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I wanted to so, count on Steam too. Um, the blockchain produces Steam for the Steam dollars and puts them aside, basically. That's the short mm-hmm. answer. And wait, the wait. amount that it creates and sets aside is based on the current value of the US dollar right. to what Steam or what? Price? The price feed for the witnesses have a price feed running where they say how much a steam is worth right now and that feed again the median over over a week is used to calculate how many steam we need or it's the other way around it calculates how many steam dollars can be created from the steam we have okay so if you know the current value of steam then you can estimate the future value of steam dollars Uh, no, you can estimate how many Steam dollars are created. Okay, I see. Um, I think the... Kind of, I, so I have, don't, I, let me get this straight because you're looking a bit uh, baffled. Um, the, the pool for payouts is getting filled with Steam all the time. For every block, there's getting two Steam put aside into that pool. And the dollar amounts you see are those Steam distributed over all the posts calculated at the current value, depending to the blockchain, to, to the median where it, which it uses to calculate. And um, the dollar value is, is, is basically the amount of steam you have for, you get for that post. You get paid by steam and you get uh, in steam, but they are, are paid out to you as either steam dollars or uh, steam power. But in the end, it's all steam. Right. Hmm. Okay. And you can you can um, settle your steam dollars in a week for the amount of steam the steam dollar is worth then at that point. That's the peg, because you can always get about one dollar worth of steam for your steam dollar, but from the blockchain directly without any third party. So when we see these vast fluctuations when it goes up to a dollar 30 or drops down to 70 cents or something 
what causes those Market wide swings? Of the price of Steam, because the conversion from Steam dollars to Steam takes a week. If you convert now and the price of Steam is falling in that week, you will receive less. So if the market expects Steam to fall, you will have Steam dollars cheaper. And okay. if it expects Steam to rise, the Steam dollar will be above. So I haven't seen it yet, but what's the cap on the, what's the market cap of Steam? Like when, not market cap, sorry, wrong word. What is the, um, the, okay. vol the volume cap? Uh, when when all steam is said and done, uh, how much hmm. permanent inflation? Yeah. Okay, so it's not based off of a cap like uh, any of the uh, like. Okay, okay, very interesting. We're right now, the first year, we are in a kind of distribution phase. Uh, Five hundred million steam will be created in that time, and from then on, we have a one hundred percent inflation per year. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's why why the steam power the vesting is 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 a thing because you get you get compensated for that dilution when you are in steam power. But steam itself are getting produced, produced, produced all the time, and every three years there's a stock split by ten. So just the, the last zero gets removed, comma gets moved one further, and everyone has that from then on. No, oh, that's so interesting. That's a that is such a different way of value representation than anything we've had before. Yeah, it's not about scarcity. No, yeah, mm -hmm. no, this is brilliant. It's so brilliant. So year one, 500 million steam are created. Is that right? Yeah. So year two, uh, another 500 million are created for a total of 1 billion. Is that right? Yeah, I never went through it in detail, but that's then, how I understood it. And then year three, it'll create another billion. Is that right? right. And then uh, those two billion will be 200 million. Huh? And then those two oh, billion because will be they'll, 200 million because the stock split. I see. So it's sort of exponential. Yes. It's always doubling, except, of course, for the stock split, right? Right, you have to stay active. Even if you are in steam power, you will have a bit of delusion and you will have to stay active to, to keep your worth in, in relation to the rest of the platform. Mm. But that's when I saw that in the white paper is 100% growth per year, I, was, I thought maybe they mean that every year it's, it's that 500 million. But that, to have an exponential growth like that, I mean, I know there's the, the stock split break on it, but... Do you feel that that kind of growth in the currency is aggressive? It's a new approach. Um, it, is, it is distributing the, the wealth from those who, who aren't active anymore to those who are active now. I mm. think that's a, that's a new, interesting, maybe good concept. We didn't try oh, it. That's interesting. So that's going to that's gonna discourage people from building up a balance, hold it, going inactive and just holding it. Yes. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. a sure way to lose money in Steam. Oh, that's so smart. That is. It's very elegant. There's a lot of elegant design that went into this. Oh, yeah. I, yes. I'm, I'm. Yeah. They have been working on BitShares a long time and Dan has learned so much. He had great ideas before. He has refined them. He has thrown out things where he was wrong. He admits it when he is wrong somewhere. It takes a while sometimes and he's not an easy person in that regard. But I think the compared to what he planned in the beginning with, with BitShares and the projects uh, connected to that, um, we've gone a huge way. Yes. So th this also, it sounds like it might kind of solve, in a sense, the problem where, for example, in Bitcoin, the guy who had, uh, what, 7,500 um, Bitcoin on a hard drive, he threw it away. And yep. it's, yep. it's in the dump, right? You know, yep. you're like, under the head moment. <laughs> what a sad <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's heart's breaking right now. And, and then, well, I mean, he's out. But the network is also out. Those, the, the right. private keys are lost. That value, that, those Bitcoins will always be worth uh, quite a lot, you know, as long as Bitcoin does well. But they're never going to be recovered, you know. 
But, but it sounds like, Michael, that in a case like that, the value of lost uh, steam, steam power, et cetera, is going to actually decrease over it's time. Perhaps zero. zero. Yes. That's very, that's really interesting. There's, so there's a huge incentive there to stay active, to keep uh, really keep creating content or uh, otherwise adding value, would you say? Yes, keep keep creating content. That's basically the, the main way to keep earning money. Um, I think curation won't be profitable very long anymore. It's already getting less and less with a huge stake. Um, can't speak for the for the mega whales. I don't know. I don't follow them how their voting reports are, but mine are uh, went down a lot. Um, and I, alone with curation, I I couldn't fight the delusion anymore right now. So if mm-hmm. I want something, I need to be a witness or or write content. So really, in you know, looking ten, I don't know how many years down the road, five, ten, however it might be. People with the most uh, steam power, you know, because that's the, the mo- perhaps the most powerful unit of currency or the po- most powerful unit in the system, are going to be the people who are the top content creators and the witnesses. Would you say that's right? Yes. So it's even whales. That way. Yeah. So even today's whales, if they don't get into the content creation game, like Dan. He's, he's into it big time, right? But if they don't get into it, they're going to see their stakes decline proportional, yes. proportionally. Right. Numbers will grow, but compared to the network, their stake will grow, uh, go down. Very interesting. So then, so some people who are, I've seen some people have uh, comments like, oh, the whales have everything, you know, they've, they've skewed it and, uh, you know, there's nothing for us, you know. So basically, that's, that's, that's a very short-term perspective. Definitely, yes. It's, That's going to change. It will. It will. It's, it's designed to change. It, it's been planned to change. And, and sure, we're half a year in of a project which could ch- change the whole future. So don't think in, in two months, mm-hmm. in three months. Think in two years, five years. Wow. Yeah, you're really dropping a lot of good information here, Michael. Yes, yes. Uh, Thank you. I am learning so much here. I've spent the last week researching the system. And I've, I've started writing up a document about it, but I have learned quite a lot uh, just in this session. So definitely thank you for that. Oh, yeah, no, you're super knowledgeable. And I, I think I recognize your voice uh, from the Steemit chat or the Steemit team speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to get anything in? No, that's great. I mean, I'm not sure what time it is over there in in Germany, but thanks to you and Travis for both making the time and and plotting this into your week. I think it's definitely been worthwhile. I certainly got a lot of value from it. Yeah, I'm very happy I woke up at 6.30 for this. <laughs> yeah, Michael, is there, is there anything that you here. would like to add? I'm sorry. Adding something. Uh, yeah, it was a nice experience. It's uh, been my first time on video. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for having me and, and keep, keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank, thank you. Again. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Travis, Michael, Stephen, Gabriel. Uh, everybody, uh, let us know what you think of the episode in the uh, comments. And please check us out at steamit.chat in the Steam Smart Podcast uh, channel. Thanks again. Thanks <laughs> again.